So whenever I do a video using my vacuum farming machine, I always get a couple questions about the machine itself. So I thought I would just talk a little bit about that. So briefly, what this does is this lets you take a sheet of plastic and you start it up at the top where this, uh, there's a heating element in that silver box and it heats that plastic until it's soft. And then you lower it down over the bed here where you'll have a mold and there's a vacuum in the bottom that sucks that plastic down over the mold to get a perfect little shell of the plastic part. And so I use that for all sorts of fun little things, especially my Halloween products. I do uh, things like these staring statues that kind of follow you wherever you go and shells for my animatronic kits like this, which is for my uh, animatronic Raven. Now, I built this machine because I couldn't find one to buy for a reasonable price at least that met my needs, which were mainly that it was this configuration. There's different uh, designs for a vacuum farmer, but I like this all self-contained. And I wanted it to fit a sheet of plastic that would be divided evenly out of the full sheet because you buy the plastic in a four foot by eight foot sheet. And a lot of the machines that I've used in special effects shops take sheets that are like, 15 and a quarter inches by 20 and a half. And when you try to cut those pieces out of a four by eight sheet, you end up with a lot of plastic waste around the edges. And I just didn't want that. I wanted to be able to use the whole sheet. So this is 12 inches by 16 inches. So the main elements are the heating element, the vacuum, and then this frame that holds the plastic sheet. So the heating element and I want to stress that this is not advice. This is just telling you what my machine is. We're dealing with some serious electricity on this. This uses the inside of an electric griddle that I found online. Um, and this is literally a whole bottom tray with the heating element zigzagging through it. And I had to find one that was the right size for the machine I was building that would evenly distribute that heat over the plastic. So that's bolted into the top of this metal box and there is some high temperature insulation in there as well. And then you'll see here, these are magnets that hold the steel frame up there. And the magnets come with a hole that goes all the way through it. And so those are just bolted. So the frame itself that holds the plastic sheet, I got some help on that. My dad is a good welder. And so he welded this for me out of steel, which is important because steel will stick to those magnets. That has a little clasp on the front that will allow you to put the plastic in and then clamp that down. Hinges on the back, handles, and then you lower that down and there's some uh, foam gasket to help make a good seal. This uh, is, I believe, called the platen, and that is a sheet of perforated metal. And underneath that, inside this box, is a, the top of a shop vac. You know, the shop vac usually kind of looks like a bucket with a thing on top of it. Got the smallest size shop vac, get rid of the bucket, just take that thing on top, and I even took the shell off of that, and that is a vacuum motor. And so that is upside down in there. And then the controls here, this is a three-way switch. So the middle is totally off. If I turn it up, that's the heater. And this little indicator light and this dial came straight from the uh, electric griddle that's in there. And so you'll notice I turned it on to heater, but it's still not on. And that's a good safety feature because now I still have to turn this dial up to the temperature that I want it to be at. And then that starts heating, that heating element. And then once it's uh, softened, the sheet of plastic, then I switch it down to the vacuum. And that's what sucks it down over the plastic. And that only takes a second or two to draw it down into shape and cool it off.
And every time I'm done using this, turn it off, turn it off, and unplug it just to be extra safe. Every piece of this is high temp rated. Components, I've been using this for about seven or eight years now, and um, I've had to make a few small modifications, um, but overall it works great. Um, so if you want to build your own, a couple of the main inspirations for this, um, Fawn Davis has a great video on the Stan Winston School. I got a lot of ideas from that. And then also my friend Rallis Khan um, has put out a, I believe it's a PDF that you can find online that shows his design for a very similar machine as well. If you want to build one, it is a project, um, but uh, it can work really well and you can make some really cool stuff. The types of plastic that I'll usually use on my vacuum forming machine here, a lot of the time what you'll see is me doing stuff in this white styrene. It also comes in black, but that's getting harder to find. And this is 030 inch thickness. And I'll also use sometimes the 060, which is obviously twice as thick. Still pretty thin though. Styrene is great for things like my staring statues. And those are done in 030 because the 030 will get better detail, 060, stronger piece. Now another opaque plastic that you can use on the vacuum former is ABS. Now it's stronger than styrene, but usually is textured on one side. And so that can kind of limit what you can do with it sometimes. And the last plastic that I like to use is PETG, which comes in clear, very nice. Um, it's usually got a protective layer on both sides to keep it from getting scratched up. And uh, again, I'll buy that in 030 inch, 060. I have gone up to 090 on these giant uh, testers paint bottles up here. Uh, a little trickier the thicker you get. And obviously a thicker plastic will also take a little longer to heat up so that you can actually do the vacuum form. Now, I buy this from local plastic suppliers. If you just Google, you will probably find a plastic supply company near whatever big city is, is near you. Um, in Los Angeles, that's uh, Gavrielli Plastics tends to have a decent supply, decent prices. In Orange County, you can go to Industrial Plastic Supply. And obviously you can shop around. There are more than that and certainly Near you, I'm sure there are some. If you order it online, uh, it's probably going to be pretty expensive because again, it comes in a four by eight sheet. And if you're getting it cut for you, then um, you're going to be paying quite a bit for those cuts. When you are cutting your big plastic sheet down to size, I'm going to show you just on this scrap piece here. You don't actually need a saw to cut through it all the way. Um, you just can score it with a blade and then pop it and you get a nice clean cut, no mess. And those companies are usually set up to serve big uh, manufacturing companies as their clients. So as just a, you know, one person buying just a few sheets, be very polite, ask very nicely um, and have some patience with them because um, they're not really geared towards small clients like us most of the time.